Are we outside? Do we actually make it to the world map? Looks like we're gonna need that airship after all, at some point. Is that the police officer? This is a flashback. Is that who I think it is? Maybe we'll get to hear her unique voice talents once again. So there's a character connection there. Did my parents pay you to let me win? Ooh. Hmm. That's a serious accusation. She didn't say no. For me, knowing how to handle this weapon means being able to protect people, to be of service to the city. That's trophy enough. Begs the question, young Kerman. What are you shooting for? Hmm. Yeah, and she's very driven. What's motivating her exactly? A sense of duty? You attacked an inmate. Why? Why not? He was a witness in an ongoing investigation. Yeah, why just seems mm. lost, yeah. devoid of all purpose. Can you just send in whoever's gonna kick the shit out of me so I can get on with my night? What does you think is going on here? In what mad world would I trust someone like you? Someone like me? You enforcers are all the same. Just asshole criminals in fancy uniforms. You know what? Find Silco yourself. Judge you much? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know. You could. Undercity's gonna eat you alive. Use an escort. Yeah. You get an escort to Undercity, and Vi gets a purpose for living. You want us to have a chat with her? No, this is a release. No. No. It's for her release. Yeah. Huh. Since when's he a counselor? It all happened real quick. <laughs> yeah. He's got his face on blimps and, excuse me, airships, mugs. Is this the start of a beautiful friendship? What's sort of exciting about Bias, there's a lot of opportunity for a character. Like, she's been in a position where she's been forced to grow up too fast. And obviously the events of the show are kicked off by her leading a group of kids into a situation that they weren't really prepared to be in, trying to prove herself. She was doing her absolute best to be a good big sister figure for Powder, but ended up sort of delivering her baggage onto her. Has a lot of class hangups about Piltover and the military police, which there obviously is a lot of truth to, but is not the full picture. In many ways, is not that far off from some elements of Silco's philosophy in terms of wanting to fight. These are our streets, etc. And it feels like the net result of that was her falling even farther down into the darkness. Now she's just sort of the same mess that she was before, but minus a family and minus an identity. That's part of what makes it so exciting to sort of find her in this jail cell and to get her out of it because she doesn't have much left to lose, but she has a lot to gain. I mean, there's a lot she can reclaim for herself. There's a lot of redemption for her to have. There are a lot of more subtle ways of looking at the world for her to obtain, which I'm sure will come out of her interacting with this police officer. She has so many great qualities as well, you know, her strength, her resilience, her capability, that if she actually were to find something good to stand for, she would be a really powerful character. Something's really weighing on him. I didn't realize what a big figure she was in this world. You said you Something's could eating Jack. I lost six officers. Yeah, there it is. I can't make this go away for you unless you give me something to work with. Chekhov's cigar cutter. For their families. From an anonymous concerned citizen. Way to totally defang him. With the money. For the families. It's all for the families. It's my responsibility to make sure the hex gates are safe and protected. What is going on with Victor? I pledge to improve lives for those in need, for the Undercity. Yeah, that's a good point. Have your people ever reviewed these locks? Mr. Talos, I assure you. Counselor, and the only assurance I need uh -oh, is to search and see the hornet's, hornet's nest. Merchandise. It's getting too close. Are you sure you don't want to confer with the other counselors before? This corruption runs deep, Sheriff. I intend to root it out. Jace is a real go-getter. <laughs> any progress with the stolen gemstone? Yes. Yes, I successfully delivered it to my mob boss. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, that, I mean, speaking of time. You alright? Uh, He's not alright. I just. I need to get to the lab. I need to get to the hospital. Boring. Wow. Super boring. Books, am I right? It's all about these rooms. This is so weird, this whole. Yeah, this is all very familiar. But did she see it? She didn't witness it, did she? I guess knowing the aftermath is enough. No, it was a mistake. It was a mistake. I really don't know what to make of the fact that she keeps the dummy there, the dummy friend. There could be a bunch of different things at once. One, just trying to recreate her childhood environment out of loneliness and desperation and sadness. But why that kid in particular? He's the kid that made fun of her. It's a very bizarre sort of love-hate thing going on there, where maybe she keeps him around to taunt him, but... 
also as a way to keep him alive. Bizarre. Really bizarre. Here we go, back out in the free world. Going back home. What a tourist, am I right? At this point, it's just a charity if she wants to hang out with the cop or not. She just successfully escaped. But in a way, she needs the police officer as well. Nice jacket. This is by shopping. You think Hextech can learn? Are you sure this is safe? It's amazing they're still alive, these two. I never stopped us before. Oh, Jericho. Have I missed these? Looks amazing. Looks absolutely delicious. Are you going to question him? About what? The meat? I wouldn't ask any questions about that until well after you finish eating. I mean, Vi takes a big risk by doing this too, no? Because she's walking around with a cop in a place where they don't take too kindly to pilt over cops. That merchant formerly enjoyed certain leniencies with regard to her trade in exchange for her generous academy patronage. By leniencies, you mean corruption. Mm, Amara's harmless. Jace is in the inner circle now, which means he gets the dirt. There are those who covet your power over the wealth the Hexgates afford. You've just made yourself everyone's common enemy, Jace. He's in a weird position because he's like the people's champion, but he's an idealist and my god are idealists annoying when you're trying to take your bribes. It's a very Mr. Smith goes to Washington situation. Jace is the kind of person that is easy to love, but also easy to hate just because I feel like we like seeing greatness if we feel like greatness is on our side. But as soon as it starts to cast a light on our own shadows, that's when the greatness actually becomes a threat. Like if you consider someone your friend, the fact that they're intelligent or or good looking or talented or whatever becomes a, a great thing it becomes a boost for you like this is my friend you know but those very same qualities become points of annoyance or anger if suddenly you feel like they're in another category from you or outside you or opposed to you you know where you'll hate someone for being handsome or intelligent or talented and try to bring that down you know try to negate that it's really weird but i think that a lot of hate in its way is a form of admiration i've had very bizarre experiences where i felt this concretely in my life where there were people who were my enemies or rivals or whatever but there would be one thing or one event or maybe even just one kind word that suddenly made me feel like they were on my side or that i was appreciated or that they weren't a threat to my world and they immediately became people i liked and became friends just because all of the good qualities were already there and the fact that i was so threatened by them was a testament to their great qualities so as soon as that came over to my side it became a great thing immediately Jace ends up becoming that kind of polarizing figure, I think, because he's very talented, because he's a celebrity now. He's well-spoken, he's charismatic, he's decent-looking. He's got his face on airships and mugs, etc. He's got the merch, but he's not on your side necessarily. Like, he's not one of us, if you know what I mean. To take a guess on how this would play out from these politicians whose world he's about to shake up, what they will do is they will immediately try to paint a picture of him that is very narrow and binary and diminishing of his actual talents. Effectively a smear campaign. You know, it's kind of sad. It's, I think it's fine to disagree. It's fine to have heated political discourse even, but one thing that annoys me is seeing people not engage with the best arguments of each other or the best versions of each other. Everyone's always trying to reduce each other into the worst caricaturistic versions of themselves, which to me is an underhanded tactic in which no one wins. Like if your side is really right and you really are a principled person and you really believe in what's best for people, engage with the best arguments of, of people. Give them the full benefit of the doubt. Stretch their arguments out to the highest points of logic and validity and defeat those that is the testament to the fact that your side is right. Diminishing their arguments into these sort of cartoonishly evil points and then knocking those down is just a way of winning at all costs and does not speak to any problem solving. You know what I actually think would make a great ally for Jace, all jokes aside about his character, is old Uncle Heimdiger. He's a little bit cautious, but at least seems honorable. I'm also wondering if this doesn't put Jace and Vi on sort of parallel paths because Jace is sort of the champion of Piltover, but is seeing the cracks and Vi is sort of not the champion of the Undercity, but is very much all about Undercity, but is going to see its cracks and is going to be in opposition to it, it seems. To be honest, I sort of the series kind of joking about how Jace is the man, but he's becoming the man pretty quickly. They did have a pretty sweet setup. They have the best, like, kid lair. That was very necessary. I feel conflicted because I don't like animal violence, but also I don't trust birds. Just 
still trying to measure up to a vine in her own mind. Oh no, but she didn't break the high score. Still not quite measuring up. It's just way more fun. This, is, <laughs> this whole scene it just seems way more, way more exciting. These are simply favors amongst friends. I never wanted anything to do with politics. You pushed this on me. You're a symbol of the future now, Jace, whether you like yeah. it or not. I feel like she's underestimating Jace a little bit. Potential to shape your own destiny. I'm not sure what to make of her exactly. Verdict's still out. I had quite a shock this morning. Enforcers banging on my door. Whoops. You know, Counselor Madara's right. Ooh. The hex Ooh, he's speaking up. The beginning. In fact, we're currently looking for new partners in our Hextech research. And as a supporter of House Talus, you'd be the first in line to any of our advancements. He's a natural. He's been quite the investment. Indeed. Better investment. Careful, Jace. Careful what you agree to. Let in the Moogle. Let the Moogle into your life. You're both in science. The guy's been around for hundreds of years. He's seen some stuff. So he ruins the fun sometimes. In this dirty world, being overly cautious isn't the worst trait you can have. You know, I have very little interest in politics, at least when it comes to political sides. I'm interested more in just issues. But part of me really would love to enter politics just because I want to know how much is, is real. I really don't know what to make of it because there are a whole bunch of narratives that come out and there's probably truth to all of it, but I'd like to know the extent to which it's true. You know, there's this idea that politicians are really corrupt and self-serving and that the position sort of select for those that are the most power hungry which is a valid idea you know, I can see that being true I also just personally believe that you got to give people some credit and walk a mile in their shoes and that things are always way way more complex than you realize before you do something like you watch people do things that look so easy it looks so natural like just do the right thing but then you enter a field and you realize that it's so difficult there's all these things you never anticipated you only see the output you don't see the process so I'm not willing to like write off politicians as like this evil class of people. There's also this idea I generally like to follow, which is don't immediately go towards evil as the explanation for things when it could just be difficulty or it could just be good intentions yet lack of understanding on how to best solve problems. While malice certainly does exist, I feel like malice sort of easier to go to when a lot of things are probably just people doing their best but not knowing how to fix problems. But the truth is I don't know. Like I know it's going to be probably some of all of those things, but I really have no guess at the extent to which it's one or the other or, or whatever. I'm also curious on what it would be like to feel this kind of political pressure. I want to know if I would be able to withstand it. Like, would, it, would I be able to do what I felt was right? Would I be able to speak honestly despite pressure? Despite knowing the kinds of hell that would befall me from not just my colleagues, but from the public if I said things that I really believed that were unpopular? I feel like it would be a very, very interesting world to face. Maybe in 20, 30 years. <laughs> the one place all the secrets are spilled. Cool masks. There's a Demon Slayer crossover. It's to ward off the spirits. Let him think you work here. This guy's having a great time. Look at him. This is also very Final Fantasy. We're at the Honey Bee Inn right now. Literally blood money. Imagining yourself a hero. One final act to make you the martyr you've always seen yourself as. <laughs> No, that was his imagination. That didn't just happen. That would have been a really bold choice. Yeah, he's just he's just complaining. He's complaining to make himself feel better. You need to weaponize the hex tech soon. Once we've cracked their prize, Topside will have no. Also, Jace was right. The hex tech is a threat. The gates. Imagine the wonders they could create if we put magic in their hands. The world will never be the same. The he's got a vision. The enemy take from the world. We're not often in the position to give anything back. Mm, mm, mm. Little test. Hand touch test. Kind of blurring the lines here. What about police girl? Thought that's where that was going. See, Victor's impatient. Jace is busy politicking and kissing. Missing an obvious point of concern right under his nose, which is his colleague and friend, I guess. That's beautiful. I can't figure out why it's not working. You will. Are you headed home soon? I thought we could walk together. Oh. <laughs> the old let's walk to your house test. 
Victor's just trying to discover the secret to the, the Rubik's Cube. Jace is all like, I'm gonna discover these lips. Oh, it just mixed with his blood. I'm not sure what to make of this juxtaposition of these two things. <laughs> and then Jace gets a cuddle. Vander wasn't the man you thought he was. Right. He was like a brother to you, and he turned his back, and blah, blah, blah. Did I miss anything? Right. She doesn't really care about the cause, or any cause. It's not her, her thing. She hasn't gotten there. That day, I let a weak man die. Interestingly, he revisits this lake. Much like she keeps revisiting that lounge. You need to let Powder die. So the fear of pain will no longer control you. You're strong now. Just like you were always meant to be. That's exactly what she wants to hear. What's happening? That's the opening music. Which means I can't use this for YouTube. Oh, she's just like walking in there. Or is it just surveillance? What's her game? And Jace just left? <laughs> Jace? Oh, there you go. There she goes, doing surveillance. Oh, they've got these they've got juice upgrades. I see you never learn patience. Yeah, I mean she did just attack this whole thing without any semblance of a plan. Where do we go from here? <laughs> More punching. Where's my sister? Tell me where Powder where is, is, yeah. Her? Keeping her. You mean Jinx? She works for him. Right, it's not a captive situation at all. She's like his daughter. Uh, it's a little more than daughter, it seems. I'll give her your regards. Please, woman. There you go. Do you ever say thank you? He's gonna know we're here now. Whose fault is that? Fair point. You gonna help me out, Cupcake? Stop calling me that. <laughs> My name is Caitlin. Yeah, beautiful friendship. I got a really bad feeling for this character. I feel like she's gonna go out not from enemies of Silco, but from Silco himself. And that would be poetic considering her betrayal. You can just tell that Silco doesn't like her. Powder is bringing hell upon this organization in a way, but it doesn't matter. Powder's the chosen one. She's a huge threat with this materia, too. She's back. From the dead. Why did everyone assume she was dead? So now we're really rolling. Like, Vi is in the Undercity with the police chief, and it is obvious that they're on a collision course with Silco, but more interestingly, Powder, who isn't necessarily an enemy. I mean, she's clearly in a villainous organization right now and role in terms of her, her actions, but she still feels very much like a lost child to me, as does Vi in a way. I sort of can't shake that feeling until they start making like really level-headed decisions. And then there's this whole other story going on with Jace, with him balancing his celebrity with a political career, with science, with a romance, with a couple minutes to spare for him to check up on his dying friend. I'm curious to know how he connects to the other arcs. I mean, there is the connection between their plot Silco's plot and the Materia Gates, but what bigger role does Jace have to play? And now I'm sort of concerned for him with him doing this wheeling and dealing and politicking. We need a father figure. We need to recruit Uncle Moogle.